Okay, if you'll take your scripture out, uh, I'm going to read it alone today. Normally I don't read these scriptures because it makes worship a little too long. But this scripture is so powerful today, I want to read it first and then go over it and the wonderful teaching that's in it. The main theme is the gift of peace because Jesus says, I'm coming back. I'm first coming back to you as the Holy Spirit, and then I'm going to come back at the end of time. This is from John 14, verses 22 through 28. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but Judas said, Master, why is it that you are about to make yourself plain to us, but not to the world? Because a loveless world, said Jesus, is a sightless world. If anyone loves me, he will carefully keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we'll move right into the neighborhood. Not loving me means not keeping my words. The message you are hearing is not mine. It's the message of the Father who sent me. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. You're, you've heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back. If you love me, you'd be glad that I'm on my way to the Father because the Father is the real, the goal and purpose of my life. Boy, it's so important that you and I make God the goal and purpose of our lives. I'm in a group where we read very interesting books every week in a Christian setting. And we're reading a book by Pinker now about how everything is improving. And there's a lot of truth in what Pinker is saying. Health care is improving, like lymphoma, Boy, I remember 50 years ago, you got a lymphoma, you died immediately, and now people are living a normal lifespan with lymphoma. Heating and air conditioning and the comforts of life are improving. There's less people being murdered percentage-wise now than at any time in world history. And Pinker goes on and on in this book telling all these wonderful things. But he left out two very, very important things in the book. And we took him to task for this. He leaves out a faith in God and the meaning and purpose that a faith in God gives you. I see this happen every week in my life. Men and women that have no meaning and purpose and cannot answer the question, why am I here? Why was I born? I'm watching them find meaning and purpose in life and realize they were born to love and serve other people and in that way love and serve God. And I'm watching men and women's lives change absolutely dramatically from selfishness and self-centeredness and greed to love and service and life and abundant life and overflowing life. And this is what Jesus is talking about in this passage. Without God, it is a loveless world. It is a sightless world. And Jesus is saying, I'm giving you these words. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my heart and soul 
so that you can find meaning and purpose in life. When you commit your life to me, Jesus said, I move into your entire neighborhood. I just don't move into your house. Your spiritual life affects every single person around you. It goes, of course, immediately to your family, but it reaches out much further than that. Jesus moves into the neighborhood. The Holy Spirit moves into the neighborhood. And he makes it real clear, not loving me means not keeping my words. And he says, this isn't just my message. This is God Almighty has sent me to tell you to love God and to love other people. And then he, other translations use the word the comforter, but I like this translation. It says, the friend, the Holy Spirit, God will send at my request. And the Holy Spirit will make everything plain to you. Now, it doesn't become plain all at once, but as you and I read the Bible, as we sit in God's presence in silence and let the Holy Spirit enter us every day before we begin our busy days, we'll learn bit by bit, piece by piece, and we'll be reminded of things about God's presence. Sometimes it seems like God is far away. But Jesus is saying, listen, I'm giving you the most important gift I can give. I'm coming back to you in the form of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's gift to you is peace. If you've ever gone through a divorce or ever gone through a death, or ever been fired from a job or been laid off from a job? Ever had people treat you badly? You understand what Jesus says. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned and bereft. So don't be upset because I'm leaving you. He said that to his disciples. I'm going away, but I am coming back. Power from on high is coming back. This is the true power that Dr. Pinker was not writing about in his book. The true power of life, the true power of this world, the true power of all creation is not physical power or mental, emotional, or psychologically power. It is the power of God manifest in your life and in my life. That is the true power. And Jesus said, the reason I can do all this is because God the Father Almighty is the meaning and purpose and goal of my life. If you're feeling sort of depressed, every morning sit in God's presence, and when you finish your time of sitting in the presence of imagining Jesus to be right with you and in you, then say, God, I'm opening up this day to you. Show me your goals for me to serve you today in loving and helping other people. I have a friend. He has a lot of disabilities. But he's always looking for ways to help people. He doesn't have hardly any money hardly any possessions. But there appeared a, an article in a Kansas newspaper about him. He knew it was about him. I knew it was about him because he's my friend. But nobody else knew. Who, and it just said, I want to thank you. I was driving on Highway 75, and I broke down. This man I didn't even know stopped and changed my tire. And, and help me. And if people like, are like this in Kansas, I'm sorry I live in another state. <laughs> the letter, because they're from out of state. And my friend, every morning he gets up and says, what can I do to love and help other people? And I know, you know, you know, you and I have to go to work or to school or we have chores to do. But if you halfway open up your life to God, you will see 
meaning and purpose in your life. And really, that's what this world is crying out for. Meaning and purpose is all you and I do is think about ourselves and our wants and our desires and our wishes. It's a hollow, empty life. But if we say, God, any phone calls I get today, any people I meet, anything that happens to me today, help me to take that and use that as a way of loving and helping you and loving and helping other people. Jesus says, it's all because of love that I came here. It's all because of your inner peace that I came here. This world is crying out for inner peace. Suicides are significantly increasing in the United States. Pinker has a list of all these things which are diminishing. Suicides are, are slamming right up there, and not just the United States, in the world. When you have meaning and purpose in life, you and I will not be thinking about killing ourselves. If all we think about is ourselves and our own desires, of course we're going to think about killing ourselves. Because we were not made to think only about ourselves. You and I were created to love and to care for and to pray for and to bless other people around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I encourage you, don't think only about yourself. Now, it's important that you not become so codependent that you take all your energy, all your resources, and all your, your health serving other people to the point where you're totally depleted. No, it's important that you take time for yourself. Right in the middle of his ministry, Jesus would go off alone into a deserted place and teach his disciples and pray. He took time for himself. But then he went back after taking care of himself and took care of other people over and over and over again. In those three years of ministry, Jesus crammed 300 years or more of living into his one human life. And actually, you can't really put a number on it. He cram he, in that three years, all the love and focus of God was alive in Jesus' life. I was sharing one, with one of our deacons here this week one of my favorite stories. It's a story about Cabeza de Baca, and I think I've shared it with some of you before. Cabeza de Baca was a Spaniard, and he was on a ship. They were taking all this gold and silver they'd taken from the Indians back into Spain. And this wasn't just millions of dollars. In, in today's money, they were taking billions and billions of dollars of gold and silver. And it was a whole squadron of Spanish galleons. And this, the ships got caught in a hurricane and every single one sank. Only God knows how much money is in the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico right now. And every single Spaniard was killed except for Cabeza de Baca and two of his companions. So they were shipwrecked in southern Florida. No food, no resource. The Indians took care of them. They fed them. They clothed them. They gave them shelter. They taught them their language. The Spaniards were very spiritual people. They had been fighting Islam for hundreds of years. And finally, in 1492, they drove Islam, which was keeping Christianity down, out of Spain. And so they were very dedicated Christians. And so as soon as the Spaniards learned the Native American language, they began telling them about Jesus and about how he healed people and drove out demons. So the Indians started bringing their sick and their mentally ill to these Spaniards. And Cabeza de Baca basically said in his story, we weren't priests. We'd never studied anything, but we were followers of Jesus. And the three of us prayed like we've never prayed before in our lives. 
and a lot of the Native Americans were healed. And then they told them about Jesus and his death and resurrection. And the entire village accepted Jesus. And so the Spaniards continued to do this. They went, the people loved them so much that they stayed with the village and told them about Jesus and pray for their sick. They'd have to sneak out at night to go to the next village. They were trying to get back to Mexico City. It took them three years to walk from southern Florida to Mexico City. Three years. And every single village immediately became Christian when they heard about Jesus. And the Spaniards had no idea what was going on. And they said, why when we pray for you and tell you about Jesus and we pray for you in Jesus' name, why does the whole village always accept Jesus? And they said, our fathers, fathers, fathers told us God was like the Jesus you described. Thank you for telling us about his life and giving us his name. Of course we're going to accept him. This is the same God that we've been following for hundreds and hundreds of years. And if you read Romans 1, Romans 1 says, everything about God is seen in creation. Now that doesn't mean that you and I don't need to tell people about the name of Jesus. There's a lot of people out there that have never heard about Jesus, even in the United States of America. They've never really heard his message. They just heard about him. So we need to keep telling people about Jesus. There's a lot of people that are really good people, but they're not born again. They need to hear about Jesus because he's healing. He's peace. He gives meaning and purpose to life. Those Indian tribes, once they understood about Jesus, had more meaning, more purpose, more of the Holy Spirit in their lives than they had before. This answers the question, what about people before Jesus? What about the Jews, the Egyptians, the Romans, all these people before Jesus? Leave that up to God. But our task now is to be absolutely 100% sold out followers of Jesus of Nazareth till the day we die. And that's the power from on high that Jesus was talking about. That's, I'm coming back. That Jesus, Jesus needs to come back in you and me every single day. Amen.